I've just finished month 12 out of an estimated six month long game development project. So I thought I'd share the progress I've made so far and let everyone know just how bad I am at estimating timelines. It all started one year ago. I'd recently left my job at a startup and was in a pretty special situation. I was a programmer without a project. The possibilities were endless. Would I decide to make a startup and become the next tech billionaire? Or would I make the greatest stock trading bot in history? No, of course not. Instead, I would enter an extremely ruthless and flooded market in an industry where I had zero experience. I would become an indie game developer. Month one. The first order of business was figuring out what I was gonna make. I'd never worked on a commercial game before, so I had to make sure it was something achievable for me. So I decided to make an MMO RPG deck builder with roguelike, wait, what? Oops, wrong script. So I decided to make a one versus one competitive tower defense game. I've always been a fan of games like Starcraft and Magic the Gathering. I also spent an unhealthy percentage of my childhood playing tower defense custom maps in Warcraft 3. I was particularly drawn to the versions where you compete against other players, because that really helped to bolster my fragile teenage ego. I liked the idea of having the game revolve around decision making. The player who makes the best and fastest decisions would be victorious. You won't be able to blame teammates or randomness to shield your insecurities. You just gotta play better. I also want the game to be very approachable. In StarCraft, I personally get very intimidated and anxious when I think about queuing up for a ranked game. I think there's quite a few factors which contribute to this anxiety, but I feel like the simplicity of a tower defense game could help a lot here. Okay, so I know what I'm making. A competitive one versus one tower defense game focused on decision making while trying to keep it approachable. Time to get coding. I decided to build the game from the ground up without using any third party engine. I know this might cause some folks out there to question my sanity, but I think it was a good call in this case. So far, I'm happy with this decision. I'm using C++ as my programming language, which does make me question my own sanity sometimes. <laughs> the rest of this month, I managed to cobble together a basic AI to play against, pathfinding for the attackers, and some rather scuffed network multiplayer. At this point, I kind of have a game. You can defend yourself with towers and make strategic decisions for how to place those towers to disrupt the, like, the enemy's path to your base. Uh, you can't completely block the attacker's path, um, I'll talk a bit more about this later. Um, and of course, you can also send attackers to your opponent by clicking on an invisible button. Now, I wanted to make sure that the player always needs to adapt to the situation and isn't just performing the same optimized strategy every game. The opponent's actions can provide this, but I wanted to see if I could push this a bit further. The first thing I did was have certain locations in your defense area blocked off. You won't be able to build towers there, and the incoming attackers would have to go around them too. These would be randomly generated every game, and would force the player to come up with a new strategy for how to lay out their towers. And I was happy with how this was working out during my playtesting. Month 2 I was pretty happy with the gameplay already. Even though it was simple, it was still quite enjoyable to play. Now it was time to start fleshing out the game a bit. The first thing I decided to tackle was replacing the colored squares with actual 2D assets. As a programmer making artistic decisions, there's a decent chance that I'd actually make it look worse, but thankfully Open Game Art had my back. I wasn't intending to use these assets for the final release or anything, but I wanted to start working on the rendering code and also get a feel for potential art styles and themes. I started playing around with the game mechanics too, trying to create more decision making opportunities for the player. The first thing I did was add the ability to upgrade your attackers, allowing the player to use their resources to increase their attacker's movement speed or health. And I quite like this mechanic, it's still in the game today. I also played around with adding power-ups to the defense area, so that towers placed in certain locations would be extra effective. But after trying it out, it didn't really add much to the game, so I ended up scrapping the idea. Month 3 Month 3 was pretty uneventful. I got a bit distracted by some potential contracting work, but I managed to make some fixes for the multiplayer server and get it hosted on AWS instead of just having it run locally. Month 4 
Month 4 has quite a bit to get through, so buckle up. The first task for this month was to make the game themes cohesive with the game mechanics. I quite liked the gameplay, but there were a couple of things which felt pretty weird. The first was that the game didn't let you make a full wall of towers. You always had to leave an opening for the attackers to get through to your base. This is pretty common in tower defense games, but it's super weird, right? Like if I'm trying to defend myself, why would I arbitrarily restrict myself to always give the enemy a path to my base? The second problem was that the source of income wasn't really explained. In the game, you receive money every 10 seconds. And every time you send an attacker to the enemy, the amount that you received each 10 seconds would be permanently increased for the rest of the game. Again, this is pretty common, but kind of weird. Where am I getting this money from? And why does making an attacker mean I get more of it every 10 seconds? I really wanted to fix these things. I don't want the gameplay to feel super contrived. I was hoping to be able to find thematic justification for those existing mechanics that I just described, but I was also open to the idea of changing the gameplay if it would work out better. I wrote up a fairly lengthy document to work through the problem and plan out some potential solutions, and I'm pretty happy where I ended up. The existing game mechanics would be thematically explained like this. Everything would take place on an alien planet. This planet has a very valuable resource on it called hydrazine, which is a purple liquid I just made up. This hydrazine would be flowing in rivers on the planet. The players have come to this planet to fight for control of this resource. The player's base would be a refinery which sits in the hydrazine river and processes the raw hydrazine into a usable resource. This refined hydrazine is the new money in the game. Now the attackers. They would travel along the river, like on the river surface, towards the refinery. Our towers would still need to be built on firm ground though. So every time you built a tower, some ground would be reclaimed and you would end up blocking a portion of the river. Now, building a full wall of towers would block off our hydrazine supply and defeat the purpose of us coming to this planet in the first place. Because the attackers are also traveling with the river, the fact that we can't block the river means that we also can't block the attackers. Okay, so we've explained where our money is coming from, the refinery, and we've explained why we can't block off the attacker path, but why does sending attackers increase our income? So there's gonna be some volatile substance, maybe I'll call it corruption or something, which sits uh, on the riverbanks and leaches into the river. This makes the hydrazine harder to process and its presence in the river decreases the efficiency of our refinery. Now when we construct the attackers, we are harvesting this corruption. We then weaponize the corruption and use it to create our attackers. Since we're removing some corruption from the riverbank while building the attacker, there's now less of it leaching into the river and so our refinery can operate more efficiently and it increases our income. Even though it took me quite a while to work through all my options and plan this out, I was very pleased with the result and I'm glad I did this. This month I also got the game running on Android. Even now I'm still not 100% sure exactly which platforms the game will release on, but I think it would be pretty amazing to have a competitive gaming experience like this running on mobile too. I know I definitely would have played it back when I had a reasonably long commute, so I figured I'd give it a go and see how it went. And it actually played alright but it's something I'm going to have to revisit regularly as the game evolves. Whew, there was a lot to get through for this month. Let's take a little breather and enjoy this video of my family's kittens from last Christmas. Month 5 This is where I did the switch from 2D to 3D rendering. For this game, I really want to blow people away with the visuals. So after the transition to 3D, the game looks like this. Are you blown away yet? No? Oh. All the models here are placeholders, but it was a good starting point to test out the tech. This month is also when I decided that I would lean heavily on pre-rendering. So by pre-rendering, I basically mean I would have some process as part of building the game in which the game's models would be rendered and output as simple images with some metadata. The images and metadata could then be used at runtime to display the objects in the world instead of using the original 3D model. 
This means I could use almost arbitrarily complex models without worrying about having too much model data, which would otherwise slow down the game. This does come with some limitations, but I'm happy to accept those limitations in this case. Month 6 My main goal for month 6 was to replace the placeholder tower model with a release quality model. I don't have the skills to do this myself, so I spent some time looking for an artist who I could contract for the job. Most of the time this month was spent looking for an artist, communicating what I wanted, and updating the game's rendering engine to make the most of the model which was being created. The finished model made by the artist was looking great. He showed me a render of the tower and I was psyched, so I excitedly added it to my git. Ah. Oh. Huh. So this didn't go as well as I'd hoped. This was no fault on the artist's part. The render they showed me was very impressive, and given I was pre-rendering everything, there was no reason I couldn't achieve this level of quality within the game. I had to do better, and that is what I'd work on in the next month. Month 7 Month 7 was spent improving the quality of the rendering. If my goal is to get high quality static renders, you can probably guess where I ended up. Ray tracing. I managed to get a basic CPU based ray tracer working fairly easily. Uh, I was very happy with the visual quality, but the performance of the ray tracer was really bad, and that was hindering development significantly. So I ended up switching to a GPU based ray tracer using CUDA. This was a lot more work than expected, but I managed to get a speed up of a factor of 10 or 15 or so. Uh, and I was very happy with this, and at this point, I was ready to work on other parts of the game. Month 8 Month 8 was mostly spent doing small improvements and tidy ups. I was playing around with the idea of building the game for consoles, but I wanted to get a feel for what it was like first. So I bought an Xbox controller and added support for it to the PC version. Much to my delight, the game plays pretty well with the controller. I haven't gone any further on the console side of things, but at the very least, controller support for PC will be good. I know a lot of people prefer gaming like this, and it's also good for local multiplayer. Month 9 in month 9, I was back to working on the visuals, this time on the UI. Up until this point, I'd basically done the minimum necessary work in the UI, and it really showed. I don't have any experience working as a UI or UX designer, but I did my best to apply what I'd learned when working with designers as an engineer. I'm pretty happy with the results. I think the main menu is great, the in-game UI still isn't great, but at least it's not embarrassingly bad anymore. Month 10. This month I was primarily working on server performance. In order to make sure this game doesn't burn a hole in my wallet, I have to make sure my multiplayer server is efficient so the costs are low. From this round of optimization and refactoring, I managed to get a performance improvement of about a factor of 10. This was mostly achieved by working at a lower level of abstraction and applying the principles of data-oriented design. Month 11. Month 11, we're almost up to date. This month I was focused on improving the background scene in the main menu. I ended up using Quixel Megascans along with a few other assets to build the scene. There's still a lot more to do, but I'm happy with it for now. I have a devlog which goes into a lot more detail about this, which you can check out if you're interested. Month 12. This month I started streaming my game development on Twitch. If you're keen to say hello, or maybe just have it on in the background while you do something else more interesting, then feel free to stop by or follow the stream. Lastly, I spent some time improving the in-game rendering, trying to get it up to par with the menu. I'm making some good progress, but as you can see, there's still plenty to do. That's all folks. If this seems like a game you'd like to play, you can pre-register at my website at starmall.net. I plan to have some perk for registering before the game's released. I'm not exactly sure what it'll be yet, but if a mystery prize sounds tempting to you, then feel free to sign up. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd like a devlog which goes into more details on any of the things I mentioned here. Um, like, subscribe, comment, etc. Bye!